Hey guys, I have a scope review for you today. Um, I shoot um, AFTA, AAFTA uh, field target, hunter class field target. And um, I don't like changing my rig once I get it set up and I'm happy with the equipment. And um, I don't like changing things. I like th keeping things very consistent. But my uh, scope on my rifle, the parallax knob on it was getting really worn just because I really worked that parallax knob a lot uh, in competition. And so it was getting time to make a decision on changing out this scope because I didn't want to get to a Grand Prix or a Nationals and uh, the scope break on me because that would be a disaster. So it was time to get a new scope. And I purchased a, a new scope, a really good scope, and um, put it on there and it took a little while to get used to it. And I got it all set up and I'm fairly happy with it. It's a good scope. There's a couple of things I just wasn't crazy about, about this scope, and I won't get into that. But anyway, a friend of mine was at an NH, uh, or excuse me, NRL 22 uh, match, and they was a uh, representative from Athlon Scopes there, Athlon Optics, I guess and um, was talking to him about uh, getting more, uh, getting Athlon scopes are, are a really good scope and good for air rifles too, and for, for field target. I've heard of Athlon scopes, never really looked into them too much. So um, he was telling me about this conversation and I pulled up their website and was kind of impressed actually. Uh, there were some scope models there that I thought might be really good for field target, um, whether you're open class or WFTF even, but also hunter class like me, um, there was a particular scope that I thought might be a good fit. And so I'm gonna do this review. I have no idea if I'm gonna like the scope in the end or not, but, um, and it's a big commitment for me to take my scope off of my rifle and put on something new because um, once I have a scope set up, I really hate taking it off. Um, but anyway, because I like consistency. Uh, anyway, so I uh, contacted Athlon and also Air Guns of Arizona because they are an Athlon dealer. And uh, between the two of them, I was able to uh, sort of choose an Athlon scope that I thought might be a good fit for me and I offered to do a, a review on it. So um, lo and behold, in the mail, I got this box, okay? Um, it's been sitting here for about a week because when it came, I was getting ready to go out of town. So, I, you know, the whole time I was away, I was thinking about this scope and should I put it on now? Should I wait till after the next match? But the thing is, I have a match every week. So if I wait to put it on after the next match, I'll be waiting forever. So anyway, so this package came and I'm going to open it up now and check out what's inside. So this is what was in the box. This is the Athlon Helos BTR Generation 2 scope. And um, this is the um, 4 to 20 by 50 model. And it's got, I chose the mil dot reticle and I'll get into more about the reticle, why I like that this reticle, I think I like it a lot. Um, so it comes in this really good packaging. It's really solid. Nothing's shaking around in there. Feels pretty good. So we're going to open it up now. So this was in the box. And again, this is the Athlon Helos BTR Generation 2 scope. All right. This is a 4 to 20 by 50 model. Um, it is first focal plane. And uh, first focal plane means the, uh, the reticle changes size as you change magnification. And that can be handy, um, kind of a nice feature, especially for hunter class. It's not really a critical thing for hunter class field target, but uh, maybe more so for open and WFTF. But um, it is a nice feature to have, uh, especially a scope like this. Um, as I'm making this, this scope is uh, under $800. So that's a nice feature for that price. Um, it's, um, for hunter class field target, the maximum magnification I can use is 16 power. This goes to 20, but it has 16 marked on it. That's very important. It has to have that for the rules. Now, why am I using a scope that goes beyond 16 power when the rules say I can only use 16 power? Uh, the reason is most shooters, uh, agree that it's better to have glass that goes a little beyond the magnification that you're actually going to be using because you get better glass and a better sight picture. That's the theory. 
So I did choose a scope that goes a little higher than 16 power. It is illuminated. It's got illuminated controls here on the um, same side as the parallax. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna put a wheel on this parallax knob. And the reason, if you're not familiar with, with field target, the reason we do that is um, we're not given the distance, we're not told the distance to the target. And so we use the scope to range find to figure out what the distance is to the target so we can use the right holdover. Um, so I'm gonna be putting a big wheel, big fancy wheel on this thing. And I'm hoping that it ranges really accurately, consistently, that's critical for for field target to be able to range correctly so you, so your pellet hits where you think it's going to hit, um, not to mention with the wind and all those things. Um, it has all the features that most scopes have as far as gas field, shot proof, uh, waterproof, dust proof, all those proofs, um, etched glass reticle, coated lenses. Uh, what else? Can I say this one is 13.3 inches long, which is a little bit shorter than the other scopes that I have. Um, it's 27.6 ounces. So I believe I'll have to check, but I'm, I believe it's a little lighter than my other scopes and uh, it has 3.6 uh, inch eye relief. So um, yeah. So one thing I'm excited about this scope is um, a couple of things. It has the uh, lockable turrets. Now, you're gonna say, well, most scopes have lockable turrets. That's true, most do. Um, I, I, my last scope that I, that I just purchased actually did not have lockable uh, turrets, and I didn't think that was gonna be a big deal. What happened was I got to a, a big Grand Prix uh, tournament, and I think it was on my last lane, I started shooting to the right, and I couldn't figure out why, and then, I was tied then because I missed some shots and I had a shoot off and I lost the shoot off because it was shooting to the right and I could not figure out why. I didn't figure out why until I got home and I noticed my windage had been turned about five or six clicks. And I'm, you know, it's not that somebody sabotaged me. What happened, I'm pretty sure what happened was just me picking the gun up out of the carrier, my hand probably rubbed up against the windage and, and turned it. You know, and like I said, five or six clicks is a lot, enough to lose, uh, lose the match. So it cost me a place on the podium because I accidentally turned my windage and didn't know it. So um, these lock and um, all you do to unlock it is you pull up on it and you turn it. When you get where you want, you uh, lock it down. Um, so, uh, the other thing is, uh, I really like the reticle, the looks of this reticle. Now, most scopes for, for mill dot scopes using holdover, you'll get mill dots and then you might get, um, half hash marks between the mills. And that's handy for holdover because your one shot at a certain distance might be a half mill holdover and the next one might be three quarter and a one. So you have to do some estimating when you don't have marks between those, those distances. This scope has lots of extra little marks between um, the mills. And I believe it's, uh, it's, I'll have to look again and we'll go do this together, but it's, I don't think it's every quarter. I think it's every, I think there's five mills, like every two tenths between uh, mills, so, and not just from my zero to one mill, like lots of scopes will give you maybe quarter uh, hash marks between your zero and one mill, and then from one mill to two mill, you'll just get a half hash mark. This one gives you all those little reference points all the way, all through your, your mills. So on a long range shot, whenever I need a one point seven mil holdover, I've got marks for that with this, instead of having to guess where point, uh, 1.7 is, you know, between one and a half and two, um, there's reference points. I think I'm gonna like that. Um, the illumination is nice and bright, and um, it also has, and I'll show you, you'll see on screen, it has uh, some uh, lines for sort of windage. Um, so, 
We're gonna mount this on my rifle now. I'm gonna commit to taking off my old scope and uh, my, or my new old scope and putting on this and I'm gonna try it out and I have no idea, but I'm hoping it's gonna be the scope I've been looking for. So I'm not a gunsmith, but I'm using what I have here to uh, mount my scope. And I have the gun in a vise, and I'm using some little spirit levels to level the gun up, uh, putting the, the levels on the action of the, of the rifle and getting it perfectly uh, level. And then I'm putting the, the scope and the rings on, and um, I'm looking across the room to, uh, once I have the, the rifle level, I've got to get my scope aligned perfectly. So I'm looking across the room at the uh, door frame um, in the room and lining that up with the, uh, the crosshair. So getting uh, a, a vertical edge and I'm lining my crosshair up with that to get it um, aligned. And now I'm putting on the uh, scope wheel from JD's Custom Design. It's a two-piece uh, product. There's a hub that goes on the parallax knob and it uses magnets to hold the wheel on. Once I uh, get the, the hub on with some grub screws, then I can stick the, the wheel on. And um, it's a pretty cool design and um, you ought to check out JD's custom design. Okay, I got the scope on and I got the wheel on and now the next step is gonna be for me to uh, take it out to the range and put new markings on my uh, wheel here and just try the scope out and see how it ranges, if it's predictable, um, if it's bright, you know, if it, if it looks, uh, if I can see the target well through it. So we'll give it a try. And I'm probably gonna also take this to a match this Saturday, most likely, and um, test it out and see how I do. All right, so hope it works out. We'll see. So Saturday, I took the uh, Athlon Helos uh, Generation 2 scope out for a field target match. And uh, I'd only had the scope on the rifle for a few days and uh, got my markings on my wheel worked out. And um, this was a tough course I went to uh, in Lexington. And um, I shot 52 out of 60, which is about my average for this particular course. It's a pretty tough course and uh, not a lot of gimmies out there. The scope performed very well. I was very pleased with how it ranged. It uh, it was very predictable, it, repeatable um, for the ranging. Very pleased with that. Um, and it, it performed very well. I didn't miss any shots because of the scope. I missed uh, a shot or two because of mental errors. And then um, I think I missed uh, a shot or two because of uh, misread the wind wrong or the wind changed on me and I didn't realize it. So. I'm very pleased with how the scope performed, so it gets an A-plus for me. So I just thought I would show you uh, my range markings on my scope wheel. Um, this is a pretty big wheel. I believe it's about somewhere around four inches from the center here to the extreme outside of this wheel. Um, from my 10 to 10 yards is here, all the way to my 55. Um, that's, that's how it looks on my wheel. So I'm using about, I would say a hundred to 110 degrees of rotation. Um, of course, if you're shooting, if you're hunting or shooting something long range, uh, you're going to use more than 55 yards and your, your markings would be different on your wheel, of course. But for field target, this is, this is what it looks like, um, as I use it. So, uh, what's really important for Hunter field target is right here, 50 and 55. I've got about a quarter inch of difference between 50 and 55. Uh, that that works. Um, what I may do is get a, a different wheel that comes out even further, so it gives me even more space between my 50 and 55. One thing to note is um, on this scope, because it is shorter, you do have to be a little careful uh, with your rings and placement and if it'll fit on the, on the rifle. I was a little concerned because um, I tend to like my scope pretty far uh, back on the gun, um, just the way my uh, cheek rest is and my hold. Um, so as you can see, this ring here is about as far back as it can go um, because the breech is right there. Um, and 
so because the the of the length of the scoop it's about as far it's as far up on the on the body on the tube of the scope as it can go so if i needed this scope to go back any further i would probably have to get a different kind of different type of of uh of rings uh maybe that are offset or something like that to to get it to work for for my particular hold um, so that's not really necessarily a complaint as much as it is just something to be aware of and it just depends on your rifle and how how uh, the mounts are and uh, your particular preferences. Another thing to be aware of is uh, my scope uh, that I uh, got here did not come with any kind of um, lens cap at all. So I purchased a lens cap to, to go on the, uh, on the back and it didn't come with one for the front either. I'm actually thinking about putting a, um, a sunshade uh, maybe on the front and they, they sell those too. Um, so just something to be aware of. Yours may not come with uh, lens caps. Um, if you're wondering what this thing is, I forgot to take that off. That's my Manus. Um, it's like a Bluetooth device that you hook to your phone and it tracks your uh, movement whenever you're shooting just so you can evaluate uh, your trigger pull and hold and all those things. So that's what that is if you're wondering. But uh, so just be aware that uh, this scope may not come with lens caps. So I've had the Athlon Helo scope here on my uh, Day State Red Wolf for a few weeks now and I'm still using it and I really like it a lot. I like the um, lockable turrets. I like the reticle a lot in it. Uh, all the little hash marks give me a lot of reference points for my holdover. Really like that. Um, a lot to like about this scope. I thought um, there was a little bit of a concern about the length of it, if being a shorter scope, if that was going to hurt ranging or um, make it harder to use in lower light situations. I have not found that to be a problem at all. Um, I really like the scope. Um, so I think I'm going to keep this scope on my rifle for the rest of the season. And uh, that's saying a lot because I really don't like changing um, anything on my rifle during a season. And um, so I stick with something once I like it. So um, I believe I'm gonna stick with this. Um, so a big shout out to Air Guns of Arizona and Athlon Optics for this product. And um, I, I really like it a lot. So uh, thanks, thanks to them. So I'm gonna get back now to my uh, little practice, a little offhand and kneeling practice. It's really humid here in North Carolina, but um, uh, that's what I got to do uh, to stay on top. So thanks a lot.